Welcome to the Office of Choral Evensong. Today the Church commemorates the life of William Tyndale, translator of the Scriptures, as part of the Reformation in a key way in which we now celebrate Evensong tonight. We give thanks for his life and his risk that he took up his cross and followed Jesus to death, death in martyrdom. So we continue our worship now with our opening hymn, 438, 438. One of the appointed psalms for the sixth evening of the month, Psalm 32, which is prayed and sung by the choir. The congregation is invited to be seated and stands for the Gloria at the end of the psalm.
The first lesson can be found in 2 Kings, chapter 4, beginning to read at verse 25. When the man of God saw her coming, he said to Gehazi, his servant, Look, there is a Shunammite woman. Run at once to meet her and say to her, Are you all right? Is your husband all right? Is the child all right? She answered, It is all right. When she came to the man of God at the mountain, she caught hold of his feet. Gehazi approached to push her away. But the man of God said to her, Let her alone, for she is in bitter distress. The Lord has hidden it from me and has not told me. Then she said, Did I ask my Lord for a son? Did I not say, Do not mislead me? He said to Gehazi, Gird up your loins and take my staff in your hand and go. If you meet anyone, give no greeting, and if anyone greets you, do not answer, and lay my staff on the face of the child. Then the mother of the child said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave without you. So he rose up and followed her. Gehazi went on ahead and laid the staff on the face of the child, but there was no sound or sign of life. He came back to meet him and told him, The child has not awakened. When Elisha came into the house, he saw the child lying dead on his bed. So he went in and closed the door on the two of them and prayed to the Lord. Then he got up on the bed and lay upon the child, putting his mouth upon his mouth, his eyes upon his eyes, and his hand upon his hands. And while he leant bent over him, the flesh of the child became warm. He got down, walked once to and fro in the room, then got up again and bent over him. The child sneezed seven times, and the child opened his eyes. Elisha summoned Gehazi and said, Call the Shunammite woman. So he called her. When she came to him, he said, Take your son. She came and fell at his feet, bowing to the ground. Then she took her son and left. Here ends the first lesson.
second lesson can be found in Mark chapter 3, beginning to read at verse 19. Then Jesus went home, and the crowd came together again, so that they could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, He has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebul, and by the rule of the demons he casts out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, People will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. Here ends the second lesson. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, who was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From then she shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
grace to hear and keep thy word, that after the example of thy servant William Tyndale, we may both profess thy gospel and also be ready to suffer and die for it, to the honour of thy name, through Jesus Christ thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. To lead us into our intercessions, the choir sing the anthem by Henry Purcell, Hear My Prayer, O Lord. We continue to pray. On this day when we remember the life of William Tyndale, reformer and martyr, giving his gifts to translate scripture into English and the vernacular, and for the printed word, we pray and give thanks for all who translate scripture so that the voice of God in the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ may be revealed to proclaim the truth in every language and race and nation in every age. We give thanks for the gift of Scripture as the way in which we discover God's Word to us 
and how God speaks to us today. Pray for what we learn in history and how holiness and humility can bring God's presence through us, through the writings of some and those today. We pray for the Bible societies and for all who translate God's word, so it is there for all to use. Prayer of the Church of Scotland. O God, the Father of lights, who by the entrance of thy word giveth light unto thy soul, grant to us the spirit of wisdom and understanding, that being taught of thee in holy scripture, you may receive with thee the faith of words of eternal life, and be made wise unto salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as we hear of God's word proclaiming justice, liberation, and truth, we remember in this Black History Month the importance to speak out against prejudice, hatred, and racism. As the cathedral prepares for the Diocesan Diversity Service on the 16th of October, we pray for all forms of prejudice against people of which who may be different than ourselves, particularly people who live in minority shadows where their lives are misunderstood or where hatred through not hearing what scripture says actually can destroy rather than condone. A prayer for this time in the Black History Month and for the need for harmony. God of peace, we pray for a spirit of mutual interest and concern between women and men of different color, culture, creed, ethnicity, sexuality, or being. Touch the wounds that racism, homophobia, and prejudice have inflicted. Heal those who have suffered abuse in any kind of way, particularly remembering at this time those who have faced abuse because of their being through past cases reviews too. And make the whole people who have been inflicted one to be free to speak. Teach us to enjoy our diversity and help us to move always in hope towards a truly peaceful community of peoples. Amen. And we pray and give thanks for the gifts of people in this cathedral. Today we pray and give thanks for the ministry of Stephen Atwater, our honorary chaplain, and for his ministry here today. On this National Poetry Day, we pray for the theme of environment, giving thanks to poetry and pray for all who encourage the gifts of poetry, especially Julia McGuinness, our poetry in residence. And as we pray for the gift of the arts, we pray particularly tonight for the Mystery Plays launch, which takes place in this cathedral after this service. For Ian Sanderson, who's also singing tonight, his work as chair of the Mystery Plays, giving thanks for it. For Matt Baker, a wonderful musician, giving thanks for his music across the city. And for John Young, director, and all who will be taking part in this wonderful project. And that those gathered here on screen and abroad from this city and around may be able to take part in many ways, recruiting, casting, sponsoring, musicians, artists, fundraising, and all those in the teams for this great project next year. We ask for God's blessing on it. Almighty God, creator and sustainer of all things, who are pleased to receive the gifts of thine own creativity, we offer thee thy name and thy work to present this play in thy name. Give us the Holy Spirit that we may enable to create the characters of stories in creation and beyond, for which will be played, and in it be one body, working together in love to thy glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we give thanks for this day and all who have come to the cathedral. In this diocese we pray for our bishops, Mark, Sam and Julie. We pray for all our pastor workers and readers who are to be licensed here this weekend, for our harvest festival on Sunday, and for all who long for hung in their hunger for being filled and nourished in their lives. In the diocese today, we pray for the, the parish of North Road in the Macclesfield Deanery and for Colin Wilson 
in the Anglican Communion for the Diocese of Nairobi in Kenya and it's Bishop Joel Wawu. We remember those in our congregation and those in our staff praying for Wendy, Gareth, Susie, Francis, Matty and Nessa. And for those who particularly ask for our prayers in faith for Glyn Gonway and Charles Hamilton Russell and for the souls of the faithful departed we pray for Ruth Har Rupert Harvey and for, for Sue, Alan Wilson, Marjorie Monks, and for Paul and Karen, and Ruth and Ruth Gannon, and for her family. And for all those who we remember in the silence of our hearts. And so with the Blessed Virgin Mary, thy servant William Tyndale, and all God's saints, we bring these prayers in saying the words of the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all. Amen.